Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. It's uh, episode number, geez, I've forgotten, 617. And we'll be recording, or we are recording, on the 24th of January 2019. And look, just right at the top of the show, because I might forget before the end, but uh, look, hope everyone has a happy Australia Day. It's uh, coming up in a couple of days' time, so whatever you do, get out and uh, jump on the barbie, get some pork chops, or some lamb chops, uh, more to the point. Lamb chops, some sausages, and and some uh, VBs, and go hard. All right. Uh, Look, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. You can uh, drag and drop website builder or install the WordPress at a couple of clicks. Uh, it's very easy, very simple. Uh, servers operate on SSD drives, media activation, uh, SSL certificates, there's Aussie support, domain registration and more. You can transfer your domain to us and uh, we'll look after everything. Uh, you can install Joomla, Joomla and Drupal. It's all there for you, ready to go. And we are also brought to you by our great friends at startnewcompany.com.au. If you're thinking of registering or starting a new company, go no further with your registration inquiries and startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company fast, easy and direct with ASICs. All docs provided like your constitution, shareholders agreement, minutes of the meetings, uh, all that sort of stuff. They're all saved in your account on the site. So if you can download them later on, if you choose, in a couple of years, if you've, you know, the, the old one's getting a bit tardy, you jump in, download a new one. All, all good to go. Uh, all right, so go and do that and uh, be sure to, uh, to I don't know, uh, go to our sponsors and have a look around and see if they uh, uh, fit you, their services fit you. It should, should be good. All right, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and uh, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds is where you will find us online. You can get us at the Aussie Tech forward slash podcast. That's where all the show notes will be. The show notes go up every week and you can dig or delve further into the stories if you wish that we talk about through the show. Uh, look, something I haven't mentioned for a while is the aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. Uh, you can grab that and put that on your phone or whatever, and it's uh, published twice a day. And it's not just tech stories or what we talk about. It's a collection of stories from news to politics to sport, whatever. Uh, I don't curate it, but uh, you know I, what I do is I just set it up. I think it's from a place called paper.li, and you just put in a few uh, uh, Twitter accounts, and it sort of populates and makes a paper out of the postings from the Twitter accounts. That's very, very good. Uh, speaking of Twitter, you can uh, follow me at Glenn Goodman, at Aussie Tech Eds, or at Aussie Tech News. The Aussie, at Aussie Tech News will pop a couple of stories into your news feed every half an hour, not to overwhelm you. Uh, Aussie Mac Zone, if you want to keep up to date with all the Mac stuff, go to Aussie Mac Zone. That's a podcast. Uh, go hard. And uh, yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> all right. Let's find out who's with us today. We It's just me and Joe uh, this week, because uh, Mr. Holiday's Jordan, well, he's still on holidays. And I know he's in the Facebook. And oh, yeah, hi, Facebook people. I know Jordan's in the Facebook. So, hi, Mr. Holidays. How are you going? Hope you're enjoying it. Are you back next week or what? Hope so. All right. Uh, Joe, how are you? I'm good. Thanks, Glenn. Yourself? Good, thanks. Good. What have you been up to? Oh, mate, I've been busy this last week doing stuff on the computer. Oh, that's the way. Yes, that's uh, they're very time consuming little things, aren't they? <laughs> oh, they sure are. I've just got this, this problem with a hard drive. Not my hard drive, but with with a, a hard drive on another computer, and it's uh, just clicking away there. So I had to change it. It's not a, not that not that much of a problem. Right. Yes. That's uh, the clicking is no good. You get all the data off it. Uh, they didn't care about the data. It was just used just for general browsing and stuff. So it didn't matter. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll get that, whip that out, chuck that one in the bin, and I put a screwdriver through the. I don't know. How do you destroy your hard drives? Screw it. Just break the circuit board, or you go further than that. Oh, look, I usually just, uh, yeah, break the circuit board on the back, uh, break the pins and um, on the back of them, you know, grab a plier, grab uh, the pins, pull them out one at a time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if, they, if somebody finds it and they want to go and try and get the data off it, well, good luck to them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like they probably could if they if they wished, but that, geez, they'd have to go through a lot of trouble. And, and why would you for a drive that you think, well, what's going to be on it anyway? But yeah, have you well, ever taken one apart? Well, I, I haven't. I have thought about taking one apart. Um, I, I, I did it once. Um, I wanted to do it once on a laptop hard drive, which I still had data on it, and I didn't. I didn't want to lose. But after looking into it, apparently some of these um, boards that you get, even though you might be able to change the board. Unless you get the exact same board from the exact same model from the exact batch, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. with the exact firmware on it. That's right. It's just not going to work. No. I mean, 
and there's a and there's a, there's a, a, a process and a half to be able to reinstall new firmware on it just to get the drive going you're better off taking it to the experts mm. well they got all the tools and the the dustless room and the white coats the white gloves and you gotta be careful of those and they got everything there's one up here in brisbane i think uh, the one up here oh, i'm not sure what their name is but uh if you have a look around if that's what you're in need of because the one in up here they'll uh, actually give you a quote before they start like on how depends on whatever how damaged the drive is or whatever and they'll say okay that'll be a couple of hundred uh, to get that data off and you go mm-hmm, okay and if they turn around and say a couple of thousand you might go yeah don't really want that uh nude picture of grandpa anymore anyway <laughs> so. well that's right and there's no guarantee that you're going to get the data back either it, they, they tell you that you know you don't get no guarantees i mean we'll have a go at trying to get it back but there's no guarantees either mm. now tell me that brings me to my mind your backup situation how's that going yeah that's all done oh good boy good boy yeah. you, you're, you're sleeping well at night now much better, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What was your technique? Did you uh, cloud it? Did you just uh, copy it again I, locally? I, I backed them up onto a separate drive. Uh, first of all, I got rid of all the the data that I didn't want, or the you know the the music and stuff I didn't want. Yep. And then I um, I backed it all up onto one drive, one four terabyte drive. Right. Um, and um, then wiped everything um, on the OS, reinstalled the OS. Um, re- put two more two two more four terabyte hard drives, and um, put everything back together in the way she went. Now, how old's your computer that you put those hard drives onto? Oh, look, you know what? The, the computer's easy ten years old. Right, um, right. It, it, when I bought it, it's a it's a, the motherboard. You know, it's capable of, of um, an i seven processor in it. But yeah. I actually started off with an i three. Okay, and um, you know what? It still does the job well. Um, for what it, what it's got to do. Hmm. It's got um, 8 gigs of RAM in it, so oh, right. that's working fine. And how did it take the four terabyte drives? Did it just suck them in and eat them for brekkie, or did you have to put bloody disk loaders and whatever and whatnot like you used to, like the old days on these big drives? Say that again? Did the, the, when you plug the drive in, did it just plug the SATA in and... It's internal, I guess. So just plug it in, and it went. It, it identified itself, and just yeah. and yeah. formatted and bang straight away. Went to use That's it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I remember the days when you know you buy a big. Oh, what was it? it? Used to be the last one I had trouble with was a few years ago when they bought the three terabyte drives out. You know the boards wouldn't handle it, and you had to find, you had to go around doing all this other stuff just to get these three terabytes working. But um, but yeah, so it's interesting because I, I, how much was the four terabyte? Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, I can't think off the top of my head how much it was. Yeah, I'd be interested. I might have a look at that after the show. Because, uh, you know, my little uh, server, as you can see, that's the one behind me uh, up there all opened up because that's a free NAS server. It's uh, It's been playing up a little bit. It did have a busted drive, and so I replaced the busted drive. Uh, they're all two terabyte drives, and I think it's six, is it four? One, two, three, four. There's six two terabyte drives in there. And look, yeah, I'm thinking that's probably about its limit. So, yeah, happy to hear there's four terabyte drives easily, um, you know, chuck them in and away they go. Happy to hear that. So I'll keep that in mind. Good on you. No worries. All right. Let's uh, kick off with uh, what's been going on. It's been pretty slow this week as I was I was conversing with Joe before the show this week. It's uh, not much going on at all. So anyway, we'll see how we go. Uh, hopefully some of these will interest you guys. The Daily Mail, which is an online uh, newspaper of sorts, and I think there's different versions around the world. The UK, I think there might be an Australian version. But anyway, uh, they demand a browser warning U-turn. So what's happened here is that the Edge, Microsoft Edge, has... Uh, say has installed or made default or integrated within the Edge this plugin called NewsGuard. Now the NewsGuard plugin is, tr- and you can get this NewsGuard Guard plugin for the other browsers, Chrome and Firefox, etc. But what the news, what this plugin is is trying to do. So you go to the, and what's happened is you go to the news, or the Daily Mail site, and then all of a sudden you'll get this pop up will come up and say this this site is known for you know uh maybe fake news not to those exact words but you know fake news site so obviously daily mail's not too excited about that there's a little picture there it says uh the drop down says proceed with caution this website generally fails to maintain basic standards of accuracy and accountability so you could imagine them they're up in arms the uh the news guard plug in blah 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 so so it's been given this warning since August, 
Uh, it's came to prominence last week when Microsoft updated the Edge browser and sort of integrated it you know, as part of the browser rather than as a plug-in. At present, the NewsGuard must be switched on by Microsoft Edge, but apparently, and this article is written by the BBC, but apparently they, BBC understands that there are plans for it to become the default option in the future. Now, the New York-based service, which is independent of Microsoft, so this is NewsGuard, also has ambitions to include its tool in further products uh, from Microsoft as well as other tech firms. So, But for now, it can be used as an add-on extension in the other browsers. Now, they said, NewsGuard said they did try and engage and have a bit of a chat with the Daily Mail, but the Daily Mail wasn't up to it, weren't into interested. I bet you they are now. Uh, so this is a quote from the NewsGuard. Our journalist analysts always contact websites if they get a negative rating on any of our nine journalistic criteria. The main online, the Mail Online chose not to reply. Uh, dozens of news websites have changed their practices based on our journalistic criteria on credibility and transparency in order to become more reliable sources of news. So the Daily Mail is not the only one that has this warning flashed all over the show. It's uh, also on the InfoWars site, which I think we spoke about at some stage, and also another political blog called the Daily Kos, K-O-S, and also, a Russian government news agency, Sputnik, also gets the, the nasty warning come up. So, uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, what do you think of that one, Joe? Any any comments on that? I think, look, I suppose, as long as you can turn it off, I don't really care. And maybe, look, if they're known for fake news, is everyone sick of fake news? I would be. I'm not going to waste my time reading stuff that's fake. So, yeah, I don't mind it. I'm, go go hard. Put it up. Flash it up. Go hard. Mm-hmm. No care, Joe. Any ideas? No? no, no. Would you turn it off if you had it switched on? Oh, probably. Just for the annoyance factor. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes. All right. Well, what what have you got for us, Joe? You got a few this week. Um, I know you like your Xiaomi's, so here's a story about um the Xiaomi folding phone. They they've got a prototype phone out that um apparently it folds into three. So you've got the big side of the phone, which is the normal phone, the the bar type, and then you've got a similar again, but it folds half a, half a screen each right. on the back of itself. Um, the folding phone has been revealed in a what they call a teaser type video from the company, which both sides of the device can be folded backwards uh, to transform it into a tablet form factor um, and uh, back into a, a normal compact size phone. Yeah, right. That's all right. Look at that thing. So, so Xiaomi doesn't provide any details about the phone yet, but the the the, the um, but does reveal that the device uh, in the video that um, is, I don't know if you're going to play the video there or not. It's just a piece of engineering model at the moment. So they're just playing with the idea. Oh, have you got a video in the in your notes, or is it just the video on uh, the? yeah, that link that you got there. There's a, a little video that you can click on, and you can show the. Um, the listeners is that on the site because yeah that's the one i'm playing there's yeah, one yeah. yeah yeah cool yeah yeah. That yeah so it looks pretty good doesn't it <laughs> actually like i'd be keen on getting one of those well like, you know what compared to the one that we st- i talked about last week um i would i'd rather get one of these as well i mean it looks like it's better made um, yeah um yeah it, it doesn't really look as thick as the other one either yeah it looks really good i think this obviously is the way everything's going isn't it all this uh foldable screen stuff like i don't mind it as long as it lasts as long as you don't put it in your pocket it creases and all this sort of stuff and um it probably comes with a protective cover as well but yeah they look pretty cool i know that for sure yeah shami has said that there's no they had to they still have to overcome some some technical problems with it um such as the uh the flexible folding uh screen technology right um, behind it um, they got the four-wheel drive folding shaft technology, apparently. Oh yes, yes. So they've got to still got to perfect that. Um, they also encountered challenges with the flexible cover um, that the, uh, of, of the screen. So the cover on the front of the screen, they've got some challenges towards getting all that fixed up. Yeah, right. So we've got here the Xiaomi has revealed. When we'll learn more details about the phone, given the Mobile World Congress starts in a month. 
Yeah, so we're likely to hear more about foldable device very soon. We're hearing about them now, aren't we? How long do you yeah. reckon it's going to be before Apple brings a foldable iPhone out? Do you reckon that's on the horizon? Is that in Tim Cook's no, secret know, lab? I reckon for sure they're going to have it somewhere. They're not probably talking about it. I reckon for sure they got it. Mm. And it's somewhere in the back there. Uh, in one of the back rooms, you know, some special <laughs> team put together to put this phone together. What's uh, it? I, I did read in passing that the look. I didn't bring this story into the into this week's list, but uh, th- there was something about the Apple is going to discontinue their LCDs, the LCD screens in twenty twenty. Let's see if I can find that Microsoft. It's in- interesting you say that because um, I was reading today that uh, Apple is going to reintroduce the um iphone se and doesn't that have an lcd screen on it yes i think it does yeah so yeah. i heard that they're going to reintroduce the iphone se back into the market well that's going to be like 240 dollars or something yeah it's going to be a lot cheaper than what it was before i guess they're trying to sort of must have a whole heap of them in the back somewhere and they can't get rid of them yeah probably you might, they must imagine. Uh, we'll get into. I found that article, but imagine at, like at Apple in their warehouse or whatever they're they're dumping ground. That imagine just how much tech that they would have, you know, that they haven't sold. You know, they must just have uh, mountains of it. I don't know what happens whether they whether you know each store stores its own unsold stuff or, but you'd imagine that anything that's uh, obsolete, you know, like. I don't know, iPhone one, iPhone or iPad ones. You, you'd reckon that they'd be sent back to be destroyed. But actually, we did do a story a few years ago on on yeah, uh, Apple destroying all their stuff, and it's just bins and bins of of tech. But anyway, getting getting uh, off the track there. This uh, yeah. LCD, all of Apple's, all of Apple twenty twenty iPhones may have OLED screens. Yeah, so there you go. Um, Apple's sh- slow shift to dop OLED. Could be due to supply and demand. Samsung remains the biggest OLED display provider. Yeah, and I'm just yeah, gonna... Chris reckons that that's all fake news. Oh, um, where's my alert? Where's my alert? Bing. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know. I, I reckon they, they are actually working on it. I mean, they've got a working model, so it can't be all that fake. I mean, if, they, if you're talking, if you're referring to the the, uh, the folding phone. Um. Oh, oh, not the Apple one. What he reckons the folding phones fake news. I don't know. He just said fake news everywhere, so I'm not sure what he's referring to. Oh. But he's referring to the folding phone or the one you're talking about. Yeah, but there is fake news everywhere. I agree. Uh, all right, let's see what well, else. You know, was it Microsoft and, and Google? Or was it? Yeah, I think Microsoft and Google are, are, are teaming together. I know Facebook as well. I think is teaming together to try and stop all this fake news getting out into the market. They're having some sort of um, algorithms to try and prevent this sort of thing from happening well i guess it's but, but i don't yeah okay so okay so fake to me fake news would be you go to a reputable news outlet and you get told bs okay so that would be fake news if i'm going to go to a site like info walls like well i would expect to be a heavy 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 slant of right-wing content wouldn't I? So whether or not that's made up or whatever, I think I pretty much know that if I go to a, a, a site like that, that it's probably not going to be the most accurate in the world. It's going to have a heavy bias on it. I think, like to me, fake news is just from a reputable outlet, just just tossing stuff out there for the fun of it uh, yeah, or for I their mean, own yeah political agenda. Sometimes fake news can get, be, can get into the grey area. I mean... Um, you know, people develop things, and they, they say, "Look, this is could be happening in the in the future." I mean, mm. a lot of a lot of you know products and 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 things get you know, put out into the market just to see people's reactions as well, to see whether there's a, a big reaction to a, a product or a service that people want to put out, uh, and they gauge from that whether they should continue with their with the you know the the, the research and whatever else that they they, they yeah. do. Because I know, like, when I go through the stories to look up uh, for what I want to talk about, uh, sometimes you'll see it looks like a fair income story. But as soon as I see too many uh, experts close to the source or uh, unknown source or whatever, I go, nah, this is this is too rumoristic, if that's a word. <laughs> and I just go, I'm not interested. I, I want give me hard facts. So yeah, I don't want I don't want to waste my time on the fake news. I'm happy for things to ping yeah, up you, everywhere. You should be- 
usually when I when I research my my stories for for the the, the podcast is I, I I usually do a, a search in Google and if and if you hit four five six seven uh, other websites that are talking about similar sort of things well then I mean yeah sure it's possible that it could be fake news but otherwise highly unlikely sometimes mm, yeah so you just ha- you just got to go to a, a hopefully a, a reputable place but but with the Facebook trying to crack down what are they trying to do are they trying to I don't know. When do they become just the, the platform and when do they cross over into being the editor, you know, of the, yeah, of the I news? I, I guess, the, you know, there's definite things like, let's say, for example, some sort of celebrity says they have cancer when in fact they don't. Um, and, and that sort of fake news can, can spread like wildfire. So therefore, I, I guess when it comes to Facebook news, they can verify that sort of information. And if they find that it's, um, you know, false or actually fake, they can start putting you know things towards getting it off. Yeah, I think like with everything, there should be some sort of take with, with take down mechanism. But geez, it's going to be hard with news. I think just stick to the to the main channels. You'll be right. Um, after a long holdout, the Commonwealth Bank has finally allowed Apple Pay uh, to be to, or their their cards to be loaded into the Apple Pay. So the Australians who bank with the Commonwealth Bank and Bank West. Now, can now are able to now use the contactless payment system to purchase items with their iPhone or Apple Watch. I, I don't know why Apple News is such a big deal. <laughs> I don't even have any of it, but it just is. Like other contactless payment systems, Apple Pay uses the NFC or the Near Field Communication Technology to process the payments as a tap and pay terminals. Uh, the deal has been a long time coming. As you would remember, that ANZ's had it for a little while, and the other banks wanted to. Uh, bandy together to try and, you know, um, screw Apple down on their commission uh, that they take for each transaction, but Apple wasn't going to have a bar of it. And the ACCC also said that you banks, you guys, you can't bandy together either. So uh, the, the banks had to go and attack or um, uh, deal with Apple, negotiate with, a- with Apple individually. So, um, yeah, so anyway, at the end of the day, the Commonwealth has bent over and buckled. So they're offering the Apple Pay and it's Expected that the others uh, are going to uh, come along pretty soon. Once the Commonwealth's done it, once one of them does it, you'll spot, you know they'll all do it. Uh, you know, do you use the Apple? Have you got I, no? You got Android. So do you use all this this Android Pay and all this sort of stuff, Joe? Uh, I, I can't use it. I actually wanted to use it, but I can't use it because the phone that I have at the moment doesn't have NFC on it. Yeah, right. Uh, so I, I can't really use that. Um, my other phone did, but this one doesn't. Yeah, well, that's the same with mine. My, that charm, my Xiaomi, the MA one doesn't have it. But with the NAB, I don't know if I can show you this. If I can pull out my phone, so with the NAB, they send you, they send you like a little sticker for the back of your phone, and that's the little magnet or whatever's inside that. That's the NFC thing there. So what, you stick that on the back of your phone. I've never tried it. <laughs> I've just, I just bought it. Never tried. It. it was three bucks or something. I should give it a shot. I, I might. I might go to the bloody Seven uh, Eleven and give that a shot. See if I can. Uh, yeah, use it now. I can't put that cover back on. All right, leave that there. And, oh, how thin's your phone when you take it out of? Oh, I nearly dropped it. <laughs> how thin is your phone when you take it out of a cover? Look at that. It just feels so. It feels like a new phone. It feels all nice. And yeah, then, that's right. But I don't think you can't hold it in your hand because it keeps slipping out of your hand. I know. That's why I nearly dropped it. <laughs> it's really slippery. That's why I bought the case in the first place. Um, I, I like the I like the old covers. When was it? The HTC used to make them with the old covers that felt like felt, and it, it was sort of a rubberized backing on it, and that, that was really really good. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, my my uh my cover's not too bad. It's got a little stand on it. You can pop it out and have a little stand, twiddle it around so you can put the thing that way. Or twiddle it around, see, but that way, easy. That's also if you ever if you ever find my phone, it's also where I keep my emergency cash in the back of it. <laughs> it's only ten bucks, so don't go mugging me. Um, yeah, what else? What else have you got, Joe? I always come up with interesting stories, and here's another interesting one from Amazon. Mm. Um, Amazon is trialing its own delivery robot. It's called the Scout. Oh yes. Yeah, of course, uh, and it was a matter of time before Amazon would start using some sort of delivery device. And in this case, they're using what's called uh, the Amazon Scout. And it's designed to take uh, your items safely uh, to your premises. What's now, stopping someone from just kicking it? 
<laughs> well, yeah, I'm just going to, I was going to get to that. I mean, these things, uh, these are little robots. They're about the size of a small esky. For those that are, that are not watching and are listening to the podcast, they're about the size of a, a small esky, and they roll along the sidewalk at a walking pace. Um, so as of today, these delivery robots will start uh, delivering packages to customers in the neighborhood of the country, what do they call it there, in Snohomish County in Washington. Right, right. So they, yeah, so they're trialing them out over there. So Washington, that must be where all the, the pollies live. So they would, there's, the crime's pretty low over there, is it? <laughs> so that's a pretty safe neighbourhood. I, I don't know. Basically, the way it works is that you get, you get your item via Amazon.com or via the uh, Amazon app. Uh, delivery times are all the same. You know, nothing changes there. Uh, so, the device will auto- autonomously follow the delivery route but will initially be accompanied by an Amazon employee. So they, they reckon that some Amazon employees are going to follow these things around initially to make sure that everything they're doing, what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, I, look, I just watched the, the video. If you guys on the YouTube or the Facebook would have seen, the, the video that must be, uh, I don't know, sort of a little advert video of it. And it just, you know, it just uh, wheels along past your house but and the lady comes out the lid opens up and she picks a parcel out of it so what happens if you're not home like does well, it just is, sit there yeah what? this is it so what? what does happen if you're not home i mean there's no there's not enough information there i mean does it does it keep the parcel and go back home and hmm. what happens if there's more than one parcel in there does and the, and the other guy picks up both parcels how does that work <laughs> I don't know. It sounds to be a lot to be worked out by the sounds of it. But I remember. Well, what about the parcel that, that comes up to your front gate and can't open the gate? Well, that one, that one in particular can't open the gate. Uh, no, that's right. No, I'm just looking. Um, sorry, you can keep talking. I'm just looking for something to, to that's show okay. you. Uh, and then, yeah, so it, it gets to your front gate. So what is it meant to do there? I mean, if, if you're not home, should it not drop it off? Yeah, so it, it, it's got no arms or anything, so it can't actually um, open the gate. Um, then there's the thing with does it even climb stairs? Like, what happens if you've got a couple of steps to get to your front door? Yeah, or if you just um, got a dirt footpath to your front door? Well, that's right. The or grass muddy. even Will yeah. it go over grass. Yeah, well, look, the, what I was looking for is, uh, look, I saw a video probably late last year now that was all about this guy was sick of getting stuff flogged off his front porch, like his deliveries. So he made this thing, like it was the the uh, the box was an iP- Apple iPod speaker or whatever you call them. What do they call those? iHomes or whatever they are. Those, you know, those Apple speakers. And so inside he put this contraption. He had like about <clears throat> uh, four mobile phones. So it's all taking photos. So it's a circular, all taking photos. And he had this little gadget that would uh, spit out when the package was open, spit out uh, confetti and also this really bad uh, smell, like a really bad fart or something. And and he put it on his front porch and he, he wanted to watch where the part, he could track it and all this sort of stuff. And, and when he got them back, because the people that stole them, they, they would just, they get scared when the thing opens up and stuff flies out everywhere and then the stench. So they just chuck them. You know, and just chuck them. So he'd go around, pick them up, get the phones, look at the videos. But um, but I was just what I what I wanted to look at was that there's so much. There's, look, I just typed in uh, item still item postage front porch, and like the the site, the results is just full of articles about things getting stolen from your front porch, and they're all recent articles. November, November, you know. Uh, January, that's a bit like last, last year. December, December, that's getting a bit on. But like, they're all there. Like, there's front porch porch thieves everywhere. Like, what makes you think that this Amazon thing's going to be any different than? Yeah, you know? look, I don't know. I don't know what Amazon's thinking. And I mean, I, again, I must say it's just a prototype, and they're doing testing on it. But um, you know, things like what happens when it gets there? Does it require a pin to open the door? I mean, the one that we we saw the. The, the little video on it doesn't have any pin number or anything. You just you see the lady just opening the lid and grabbing mm. the, the parcel inside. What about uh, if it does that mean that anyone can walk along and just grab it or I don't know. What about what'd be better is uh, the lid opens up, the drone pops out with your package, just flies over to the back porch, <laughs> drops it. <laughs> the drone flies back, goes back into its garage, ready for the next house. Now that's that's getting better. Puts it at your back door rather than the front door. But well, it, it, the, the Amazon is actually working on something else. Um, 
and it's it's got to do with um you know delivery drivers dropping stuff off in people's garages so i'm guessing i mean you've, you've probably even seen them there's also a thing where they drop them off in people's boots like if you're boots or trunks or whatever you want to call them uh there's a service that allows uh, a driver when you're at work rather than walk up and give it to you uh you have access to the boot of your car right uh, it then allows the the delivery driver to access the boot of the car <laughs> somehow i don't know how <laughs> right. uh, drop the drop the parcel in there and then away he goes what about you just increase the size of your doggy door and this thing can just zoom straight through dump it dump it so it does a big poo out comes your parcel and then comes back out through the doggy door that's that the fun too yeah <laughs> i don't know how that's going to work for them but anyway yeah, um, but it, to me it just seems like, like a whole heap of money being invested into these things where you know i don't think they're going to work as good as they think they're going to work well wasn't australia post doing something like that as well, uh, well i don't know i think they i think they're working on drones Australia Post might be working on drones, which is a bit more um, a bit more realistic rather than these things. I mean, like you said before, what happens if someone comes along and kicks it over? Then what? Yeah, that's right. Hang on, I'm just reading something here. I thought I'm, I was just trying to find some. I can't find it, but I'm sure that they had some sort of uh, some sort of <laughs> device that rolled up the street. It's just as useless as this one needs needs more uh, more work, more thought into that one. I think. All right. Uh, look, the word of the year. You'll never guess what it is. The The word for people's choice for 2018 word of the year is single use. Is that two words? I don't know. But it's single hyphen use. Now, this all comes about, I don't know who votes for this stuff. I think it's just off the, is it Macquarie? I think it's just off the Macquarie Dictionary website. You could go on and and just and and choose what word you like the best. But anyway, uh, single use came about because of the concerns for the environment. So you got the single use plastic bags. The big thing in the US is these single use straws. I don't know. They're all going crazy about straws over there. Like, haven't they got other things to worry about? Um, you know, so uh, bags, disposable coffee cups, all this sort of stuff. So the word. Yeah, which obviously means disposal after one use only. So that was only, it beat number two place getter. Uh, you never guess what that, well, you might guess what this one is. Me too. Is that a word? Or is that, are these things words? Or are they some sort of catchphrasey type thing? I don't know if they're words. Are they actually words that you're going to put into the dictionary? Me too. You're going to look up M and see me too? Or is that two, that's two words. Me and two is two words. I don't know. I might, let's have a look. Macquarie Dictionary. Let's have a look. Macquarie. But I think Macquarie Dictionary goes a bit crazy, doesn't it? They they put in anything these days. Dictionary. You want to go to, what's that English one? Uh, the Oxford Dictionary? Yeah. Is that the only thing Yes. <laughs> me. Hang on. Let me put you on the screen so you can see what I'm doing. Me too. Let's see if that's in there. Oh, I've got to sign in. That's a bit rude. Free trial. No, I'm not going to go free trial. I can't be bothered. I wonder if there's a, a Google dictionary. Well, that would be interesting. Probably I wonder be. If there's, is there such a thing as a Google dictionary? I have to look it up. Yeah, you can get online. There's the online dictionary, but I can't believe it. So even to find a word, I've got to log in. Oh, that's just rude. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, well, let's try the online dictionary, which probably wouldn't have as many, uh, as many um, rules as Macquarie. Me too. Let's see if me too's, I spelled too wrong. T double O, T double O. So me too. Oh yes, me hyphen two. So this is what they're getting the way they're getting around it by hyphen hyphenating two words. That's that's not right. Uh, and the word oh it's slang. At least they've uh, recognised it's slang characterised by or involving me tooism. So there you go. Uh, what about single use? Let's see what single hyphen use results for single use. Oh, online dictionary didn't like that. There's no result. What did you say? Oxford. Can I do a free the Oxford dictionary? Yeah. Can I do a free search in the Oxford dictionary? Oxford. Di I don't know. Oxford dictionary. I'm going to have a look. Well, look, I can search there. Where's the search? Oh, the Hindi word of the year. All right. What about the English word of the year from Oxford? Hang on, I can't even find view the English or Spanish. Well, I'll view English. 
I can't really read Spanish or speak it. Okay, me too. Is it in the Oxford? Yes, uh, informal, relating to the adoption or imitation of another person's views or policies, often for political advantage. He has been a Me Too liberal on many issues. That doesn't... Uh, who knows? Anyway, that's rubbish. But anyway, that's the go. Um, yes, so other words. Yeah, however, the word where I was up to in that story. Uh, which uh, uh, Honourable mentions have gone to a word... Uh, Hygge, H-Y-G-G-E, a Danish word for the practice of creating an environment of coziness and vertical farming uh, where food is framed or is farmed vertically in stacked structures. So I've never heard of this Hygge or, well, I've heard of vertical farming. Didn't know it was that popular though. Uh, now, 2017 word of the year, to give an example of craziness, uh, milkshake duck, which is a, do you know what a milkshake duck is, Joe? I've got no idea. What's a milkshake duck? It's a term that describes an overnight social media sensation whose positive support quickly ends with closer scrutiny. 2017 word of the year. Now, <laughs> here's another one. A BDE. So this is all words 2017 now. I don't know if we did this last year, but the, uh, a BDE, which stands for Big Dick Energy, means a self a sense of self-confidence, un- unaccompanied by arrogance or conceit. And another one, deep fake, a video of a computer-generated likeness of an individual created using a deep learning without the individual's knowledge, often for the purpose of misinformation, vin- vin- vindictiveness, or satire. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. You feel all excited now? You know all those the words of the year for the last two years. <laughs> Exciting. All right. uh, they're always adding new words. I mean, they're surprised at the top of words that they're adding into the dictionary these days. Yeah, I can get, I can get what they add. Oh, I don't know, you know, some of them, but the, the, these ones that we this year, this year, the me too and the single use, they're just two words put together. I don't think that they're, they're real. I don't think, I think they're contenders. I'm just spell it with M double E dash two. Yeah, they're not. There's a, there's a variation of the spelling there as well for that. They're not real words. I think they they should be banned. Dictionaries are becoming a joke. I say. All right. What else, Joe? What else have I got? Okay. Um, now, everyone's seen this thing about the ten-year challenge on the Facebook and on the on the Instagram and on the on the Twitter. Mm. Apparently, um, some people might not realise, but if you're using the social media, you'll probably notice a lot of posts on Facebook, etc. Uh, mostly from you know ten years ago and of today. Yep. According to a tweet from a tweet from Kate O'Neill, she ponders on how all this data could be mined to train facial recognition algorithms on your age progression and of it, and relate that to age recognition to the social media platforms in which they are posted appear. Mm, okay. So if you want to read more uh, on this article, you can um, see it on our show notes. But basically, imagine. Uh, image recognition algorithms are plenty sophisticated enough to know how to pick up a human face from something else. So, for example, if you upload an image of a cat 10 years ago and a cat now, um, as some people actually did, Mm. uh, you'll find that that particular sample would be easily thrown out as a fake by the facial recognition software and disregard it. Right, okay. So that's uh, sort of a bit more in, involved than what I would have thought. I thought it was a bit of harmless fun, as the title well, suggested. That's, that's, but... what I, that, that's what a lot of things. That's what a lot of people are thinking. You know, oh, this is really cool. Uh, look at me at ten years ago, and look at me today. Um, hmm. Sure, you know, for the people like you and me, you and me who are sort of more into the privacy and security of, of, of what's happening online, myself, you know, really, I, I, I didn't do that personally. I thought, no, this is all bullshit. You know, like they're just going to get more information on you and they're going to put in a database somewhere mm. and uh, then it's just going to stack up and they've got all this new old data from back then and now. And and this is what Kate's saying, that you know she thinks the same thing as well. I know, like with the Facebook, like I've been using it less and less. Like seriously, like less and less. Like I've been, yeah, like, you know, I open it up and there might be... 40 notifications like i just don't use it as much anymore but uh look it can be 
you know, it, it sounds like all good fun, but like anything, people go too far, you know. they People take things to the other extreme. And uh, for an example, the one that I'm thinking of is like 10 years apart. Like someone put a photo up of a child, right, 10 years ago, and then a blank photo of today. The child was had passed away, you know. And it was very... They just people just take things to the wrong side, you know. I thought that was really bad, and whoever did that, you should be ashamed of yourself. That's terrible, and uh, I'm, I don't think you'd be listening to such a high quality intellectual show like this. But if you are, you're terrible. But uh, yeah, so there's there's the good and bad side of everything. Like there's those apps out there that uh, you know you put your face in, says what will I look like in ten years? You know, a bit of fun, but is it? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's all got to do with grabbing your data, grabbing your information and putting it on a database. That's all it is. Um, mm. You know, you really should keep away from these sort of things. Like um, I, I saw one, what was it, last week? And uh, what is my favourite? Uh, what, what what would I be if I was uh, a drink? Like a, a <laughs> you know? And if you go ahead, I mean, I didn't go into it, but I saw it posted on, on the Facebook and I thought someone's actually gone in there, answered all these questions so that they can – give them all this information about whatever it is that they're asking. Yeah. And just to come up with a, a little you know, funny clip saying, oh, you're going to be such and such a type of drink. <laughs> but even that, like, there's no algorithm at all behind that sort of stuff. It's just a random, you know, what sort of drink are you? And then the program will probably just go randomise around Coke, Fanta, Lemonade, uh, whatever, and there's a thing. <laughs> you know, it's rubbish. If it had some sort of substance, you might go... Uh, okay, you know, I'm a cheery yeah, guy, you know, so maybe or, I'm a Coke. I don't know. Or, 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 or I turn out to be this sort of plant, or I turn out to be this sort of animal. It's all sorts of, you know, Rubbish. there's all sorts of, you know, surveys that people can take and do stuff, and, and all that it's really doing is just taking the uh, the information off them. They should really not do them. Mm. Yeah, look, there's very few that I do. I do get suckered into some of them, but uh, just for the fun of it. But it'd be good if you could have, like, a face a fake Facebook account you know just say you could do all this rubbish on one of those on the on the fake account that's what we need if everyone got a fake facebook account that's what we need uh all right you finished with that one joe um i just wanted to say though that in in uh in facebook in facebook's defense um they saying our spokesman has denied having anything to do with the 10-year challenge um that this is just a user generated mem that went on its own uh, viral tr- uh, track. Uh, mm. Facebook, did, Facebook did not start this trend. Uh, and uh, the photos that have already existed on Facebook uh, went on to say that nothing gains from this memo, this memes. So besides the reminding us of the, the type of fashion that was there was in 2009 compared to 2019. Um, as a reminder, Facebook users can also turn off uh, facial recognition um, on, on in their settings at any time. Mm. I didn't even know you could do that. Can you? Did you know that there even was such a thing as a facial recognition settings in your Facebook account? I didn't know it. it, it uh, maybe yeah, in the photos, it must do. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Oh, I don't know. I never knew that. I, you can do it. I have to go and look for it. I know it's in the Google because I upload photos to the Google Photos, and I know that you know I can type in show photos of Glenn. And then all the photos of me come up. So yeah. I, so. I, I know Google's got it as well, but I wasn't aware that Facebook had this feature where you can turn it on and off. Mm. Yes, yes. So I guess like if Facebook is doing the photo face recognition thing in their photos, yeah. Yeah, good. Well, I, I guess they have to. I mean, it knows when you're getting tagged in stuff. So they say, oh, so-and-so. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. There's also those little squares that come up when you focus focusing. Yes. Um, it says, oh, is this so-and-so? So mm. it must know. Yeah, look, it can be a bit of a worry, I guess. But again, I think it just comes down to like, I don't know, if you want to use, like, say, I want to use the Google photo. So, well, I'll put up with Google face recognizing me, you know. Um, but is it right that, that I go turn it on for me and then it's all, all turned on for everyone I take a photo of as well? Well, not turned on, but everyone, everyone that I upload to Google Photos, their face is recognized because of my settings. Well, that's right. right. As as Alan says uh, rightfully in um, in the Facebook feed, and not only that, the, the people writing the questions also collect the friends' data as well. So not only do they get your data, but it collects your friends' data. So you may not want to give your data out to anybody, but 
because the fact that your friend does or the people that do it mm. um, have have this have have this post, they still get your data anyway. So you know, please, if you, if you're one of these people that do that, try not to do it. Yeah, I reckon they you know people should put up real funny ones. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> picture of them ten years ago, and a picture of just someone completely different. Throw the algorithm into the into the toilet. Uh, all right, here's one. Uh, this is is this one of my this is probably my last one this week. It's probably the probably the best one. I probably should have spoke about it first, but uh, most entertaining anyway. So John McAfee, we all know John McAfee he provides our hours of uh, entertainment for us all. He's recruited hundreds of masked lookalikes for his 2020 presidential bid. So last year, he. Uh, he advised that he was going to run in the 2020 U.S. presidential election. But the only problem is he's wanted by the IRS, so he can't show his face. Otherwise, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be busted. Uh, so he's running his campaign in exile. So today, or this week, a grand jury was convened by the IRS to indict Janice McAfee, his wife, and John McAfee, and four as yet unnamed campaign workers for various tax fraud issues. So it goes on, blah, blah, blah. So uh, from his videos, and I can play one in a second. I'm not sure if this, hopefully the sound will come out for the Facebook people. It will on the on the uh, other one, but uh, hopefully, but because it's quite entertaining. You're probably wondering how I'm going to manage my presidential campaign from a boat, he said. Uh, he goes on and goes, volunteers are creating masks of my face, which are going to be given to thousands of people in two different groups. First, our road warriors, who once a month are going to appear in parks, street corners, restaurants, all around America while I speak through loudspeakers at them. Uh, he went on and said a second group would appear in the mask at keynotes and conferences to represent his campaign on the road. I'll be going to conferences as a surrogate, I'll be looking at people through a camera, answering questions, shaking hands. That's <laughs> weird. As well as tell my surrogate to shake hands and speak. He told CNET he has already had hundreds of people sign up for, to be surrogates for his campaign. Like, do 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 do. A bit cuckoo. Yeah, I know. That sounds a bit weird to me. Look, I'll see if I can uh, look. I'll get, he's only got this. Uh, there's a two minute video here. I'll see if I can pull that up and show you because it's. Uh, he's. Yeah, he's a bit off the he's off the planet, old John. But think, Wait, why can't I do that? The SSL's getting in the way of me me thing. Ah, I mean, you know, you here we go. I have to expand that. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can hear this. Well, there's his there's his video. <laughs> well, is it going to play? Well, that's right. It doesn't play in Firefox for some reason. But anyway, oh well, I tried. Let's see if the YouTube one will play in Firefox. Copy link address. I don't know why that wouldn't play in Firefox. But anyway, here we go. 2019, for two years I've been speaking at conferences around the world and writing and making videos about the fact that cryptocurrency will at some point come head to head with governments. Why? Because when privacy coins are widely used, Governments will no longer be able I don't think you got any to collect income taxes, meaning governments Hang will on. have to shrink and find new means. And I've always said this is a good thing. All right. So as you can see, yeah, I'm not sure if the sound did come out on the Facebook, but anyway, it was go and have a look. They're showing. I put the two links that I'm talking talking about in the show notes. They'll be available pretty soon after the show gets uploaded. Um, yeah. So he's a bit of a kook. Uh, and while you're there, I know we've told you before, go and have a look at some of his other videos he does uh, with the girls and with the guns. And <laughs> I wonder whatever happened to his phone. Remember that phone he was going to put out, the blockchain phone or whatever it was called, all full of security and everything? That's right. He had a little security key and all this sort of stuff. I think he's in exile. I think he's, uh, he's, he's, his inventions have been cut short because of his exilation. Uh, he's not allowed to step foot back in the US. Crazy. Crazy. If anything, that was probably a bit of fake news. <laughs> That's all. Look, it's probably all rubbish. It's, it's probably not fake. It's probably just there to, uh, um, I don't know, get publicity for him. Some sort of a concept, maybe. That's what I was trying to say. It was some sort of a concept. It didn't actually eventuate, but it yeah. wasn't fake. Yeah, <laughs> have a look at have a look at the video. The second video in the show notes is it's a Twitter link. Have a look at that video, and um, yeah, woohoo! <laughs> okay, any more from you, Joe? 
Look, I've got one here where um, Google plans to limit the ad block of performance on a Chrome, on a Chrome browser. Oh, right. Right. And why yeah, is this? So, you know how you get all these ad blockers and uh, tracking software blockers and all that sort of stuff? Yes. Uh, apparently, Google now, um, what does it say here? It says, top developers of ad blocking and anti-tracking software are raising the alarm over potential changes coming to the Chrome browser that were recently disclosed in a public Google document. As a result of these changes, at least one company is now threatening potential legal action. Hmm. Yeah, so against Google? Yes, yeah, so the proposed changes would replace the API relied upon by the privacy extensions like uh, uBlock and Ghostery with another designed to diminish the effectiveness the content blocking and ad blocking extensions. So they're trying to stop that. The changes uh, would, however, leave some functionality based uh, on, on some type of filters um, in the ad blocker plus. And now I think the only reason they leave some functionalities is because uh, it's noted that Google have reportedly paid to whitelist its own ads in that particular part of it. Yeah, right, right. Well, I guess, look, it's an unfortunate thing, but today the internet does survive just on ads, doesn't it, really? Like, uh, it does. Like, unless, if, if there was no ads, what, do you just want to sit around reading people's holiday adventure blogs all day long? You know, and yeah, no, so... Yeah, I know. you got I to mean, take good with the bad. I'm just, I just can't help but think, you know, like, I'm, you're paying for, in, in my case, I'm paying for YouTube Premium, which is like, uh, you know what, 12 or $13 a month, something like that. Yeah. So that you don't get ads on YouTube and all your ad, uh, and all your browsing and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I can't help that maybe something's happening in the background with this, you know. Um, but you don't get ads now on I, YouTube. I don't. No, because I'm paying, I'm paying for it. I'm just thinking down the line, are they proposing to try and change some sort of algorithm to allow it to happen? I don't know. Well, I guess, um, well, you know, the the biggest rort was the Foxtel, isn't it? Like you're paying a hundred bucks a month, you know, for pay TV when it was sold to Australia, it was no ads, you know. But um, and now it's just chock full. And then it went from no ads at all, then it went to oh, only station ads, and now it's just hell for leather. Yeah, it's the same as a commercial channel, and you still got to pay oh, for yeah. it. Yeah, they also introduced no ads during the movie, so they're not going to stop your movie halfway and start putting ads through it. But uh, they did. Uh, allow ads before and after. So, well, mm. oh, so movies are exempt on the Fox Hill. That's something, yes. I guess. Yeah, so, so they, don't, mm. they don't stop every five minutes like they do on TV and start, you know, giving you an ad. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that's coming. You know, if that comes, then it's what's the use? I think it's, the- yeah, every, everything needs, like the YouTube, I guess. What, what Aren't they making enough money off the ads? Is that what they're saying? That they've got to push everyone into a subscription model? Uh, well, look, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a known fact that you know Google the the advertisers who are advertising on on uh, you know like YouTube and stuff like that that have their ads blocked. It's a known fact that they're losing money over it, right? Because of these ad blockers and stuff. So, mm. um, I mean, you know, it says here that uh, this basically means that Google is destroying the ad blocking and privacy protection as we know and use it. Uh, Ghostery, which I don't even know. Ghostery, I don't use Ghostery. I use some other one. Um, said that uh, in a statement that they, Google, pretend to do this for the sake of our privacy and browser performance. However, in reality, the users would be left with only very limited ways to prevent third parties from intercepting their browsing and surfing habits uh, or behavior and get rid of unwanted content that they don't really want mm. you to see. So um, Google says in, in the response, um, the reasoning behind the proposed changes according to its documentation is to provide better privacy to users by preventing extensions from reading network requests made on behalf of the user. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, I guess, is it's only going to be a Chrome thing, I guess? Yeah, it's a, develop, it's a developing yeah. story. And so this has just, just been released. So yeah. um, it's just something to keep an eye on uh, because, you know, you had a little bit of grace there with, with you know, oh, not having ads pop up, and and the, as some of the ads now will even start playing during the video as well. I've, I've mm, noticed, yes, not two different accounts. I've got my own account, uh, and I've got another one that hasn't got the 
the, the uh, paid the paid version and th it's a big difference i'm telling you i mean you know you even get ads coming up halfway through you know i wouldn't say movie uh video clips but they come up halfway through you know like if you're watching somebody do a review or something yeah um, they'll come up halfway through them as well yeah i know like i watch uh pen and teller clips and the ads come up probably twice in one trick so, um, yeah, I know what you mean. But, like, look, thankfully the ads that do pop up like that, they don't go for four minutes. They only go for, like, quick little 15 seconds, which I guess I can handle. I don't use an ad blocker. Um, I don't know. Maybe it probably just can't be bothered, to be honest. But, yeah, I don't use one. Uh, I'm not worried about extra bandwidth. Some people are worried about using all the bandwidth, to, you know, the ads. I'm not worried about that. Um, nah, look, if, as long as they're 15 seconds, like, I'll go on to... Uh, say Fox Sports or maybe I think Channel 9's pretty bad for it the Channel 9 website every time you read a story you go watch a clip and the clip might only go for like 15 seconds itself but you'll get like a minute of an ad and as soon as I click on one of those and it's an ad I just go straight away I'm, I've lost interest straight away I've read about it that's enough I want to you know I'm not going to hang around for a minute of ad just to watch a 15 second clip yeah So, and this is my point this is exactly why I'm using these particular blockers um, you know I've got um, one's called ad blocker, and I've got the other one's called ad ad block. So the two different two different types of blockers that I'm mm. using, like extensions for for Chrome, right? Um, and they do a really good job. They keep all my ads away, and they keep away all I mean all the things from popping up, which is really good. So what Google proposes to do is to change something on the API that that allows current setup not to work not to do it yeah uh so what's the what's the main reason you block your ads just you just don't want to oh look, look you know there's nothing worse than having to start watching something and you're really involved i mean i don't know sometimes i really get involved in you know listening to what people say mm. uh, like you know ted ted uh tedx podcasts and stuff like that you know just listen to it and then all of a sudden you hear this break and it's like and uh, and then <laughs> yes. and it comes back and, and look and sometimes they're not done very well as well. I mean, you they're loud. Notice, sometimes mm. they're not done very well, and it, and it freezes up your screen and it freezes up your uh, just. You yeah, know, you have to close the page down, and you might have you know two or three other ads uh, uh, pay, uh, tabs open, and you have to close the whole lot of them down just because this one is stuffed up. It didn't work. Yeah, properly. I know. I find that a lot on the phone. Yeah, you're right. Like you you'll be watching a. Uh, something on it and then the ad will come on and then obviously the phone's got to go oh got to go and process something else so it slows and you turn you want to turn the phone around to landscape and then it stalls and then you try and do something else because of that problem and then once the phone recovers it does your your rectification that you tried to do and then it just all goes a mess it's all you know that's right goes yeah. to custard I'm, yeah i know what you mean but um yeah so, so it's really annoying i mean you know that's why I don't buy, uh, like I said, I, I wouldn't mind either if it's just a, a 10, 15 minute, uh, second ad, perhaps before, like in the beginning or at the end, mm. but not during the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, um, I, I think we're uh, about due to close. Joe, that was a... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't have anything else for this week. There hasn't been all that much, as you were saying before. No, that's right. I thought we were getting uh, going to be strapped for things to talk about. We had a, I put a I put a call out. So uh, thanks to the people that did respond to, to the call. Uh, things someone wanted to know about the data encryption laws. Uh, who's who was that? Can I? Oh, I can't. I haven't got Facebook open. Sorry. And the other one was the five G versus MBN. And uh, I think. Oh, look, mentioning all that, I said I said I'd give someone a shout out, but I forgot who that was. Now I might remember for next week. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I sh yeah. All right, but anyway, not to worry. Uh, yeah, thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for your stories. They were they were really good. We'll see you. No worries, uh, man. Thanks for that, having me on. No worries. We'll see you next week. I think uh, is Jordan going to be back from holidays, or we don't know. I, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure he is. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Holidays, eh? I haven't seen him since before Christmas. Blimey. <laughs> anyway, good on you, Jordan. Hope you're having fun. Don't get sunburnt. Make sure you wear a hat. All right, thanks for joining us. Thanks to everyone on the Facebook. I think the Facebook feed went, all the stream went pretty well. Uh, so that's good. Lots of comments there. Good to see you, Alan. Chris, who else has been in there today but a few? Uh, Joe, you've been in there. Jordan, oh, there he is. Good work. He's got to go. He's on holidays. Jordan's got to go. <laughs> okay, good on you. All right, good stuff. 
Okay, then, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to have a happy Australia Day, whatever you do, and fire up that Barbie, will you? And um, have a beer for me. All right, see you, Joe. See you next week. All right, cheers, mate. See you, guys. Bye-bye. See you, Facebook. <laughs>